A Gay and a Non-Gay is a podcast from James Barr and Dan Hudson. They're like a lovely little couple, except they're not. A lot of the time on this podcast, we talk about like chickens or we've talked about douching or all sorts of like trivial stuff. But I think we probably want to go there today and talk about Harvey Weinstein. Our producer, uh, Talia, Dan's girlfriend, uh, joined in on the Me Too Twitter stuff yeah. um, last week. And it was amazing. And pretty much every single person in radio mentioned it to me that I've met uh, since then. Oh, really? Because Talia used to work in radio in the UK. Dan and I both work in radio in the UK. And um, with everything going on and the way that now everyone is being encouraged to talk about this stuff since Harvey Weinstein, um, Talia decided to finally tweet about some stuff that she'd experienced in radio. And I want to talk about it on the podcast because, in a way, um, I think it's very important for gay people and non-gay people to speak up about stuff, not just women. Because women, obviously, have had a lot go down and it's absolutely disgusting and awful. And some of the tweets I've seen on the Me Too thread have just broken my heart. Um, yeah. But we, as gay men, I think, and the community tend to kind of airbrush it out, like, oh, it happens, you know, we're all men, we're all sexual and stuff. But there's quite a lot going on that um, that we need to talk about too. Not to hijack it, but it's very important that everybody talks about this stuff and is more open about it because it's happening everywhere. It's so it's clearly so widespread. Yeah. And it's so wrong that we've all just let these people in power get away with it for so long. I've got so much to say. I don't even know what to say on it. I mean, should we start with what Talia wrote? Uh, thinking about the former head of a national radio station who used to give young men radio shows in return for naked pictures stroke sex. Working in a job where he worked in a radio event celebrating young people in radio. Here's the thing. Um, so Dan and I both know who that tweet is about and we won't be saying. There's every chance that he probably listens to this podcast. I wouldn't be surprised. But um, I, also, I also think that I, I haven't had experiences with that guy, but I've had experiences with a hell of a lot of other radio people in that yeah. sort of in that position. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of a big thing to talk about. But I had a guy message me who worked for a radio station um, when I was younger, and his text message to me literally said, um, do you use dildos? And I was like, what? And because that was so out of the blue, <laughs> I literally was just like so thrown, rather than responding in a kind of, oh, I want a job from you way, I just wrote, what? what? What kind of question is that? And then he came back with, oh, I just wondered like when you're playing with yourself. Sorry, I'm, I was I'm like, laughing, not because it's No, it's hilarious. And I was like, this is, I'm sorry I'm not going down this, com I'm not having this conversation with you. And I don't think I ever spoke to him again. Um, that was the last time I think something like this has happened to me. But I also had something happen to me when I was like 18. And uh, I worked for, I was doing radio shows um, all over the place, all over the country to try and like build up my radio career. And this particular boss um, befriended me, I suppose. And I ended up staying at his before a radio show. And it's one of those things where you're like, I don't, I can't say no, because it's not like it's as brazen as if you do this, I'll give you a job. It's like, here's a job. By the way, think you're kind of hot. So you don't know what to do. You're like thrown, aren't you? Yeah. How do you do that? Like, what do you do in that situation? And unless people are talking about it and making that conversation quite loud, you don't know how to respond. So you just do it. I mean, I don't know why this sort of thing doesn't exist in school education. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't. It's just it's completely ridiculous. There was there was a whole uproar in because um, the university tried to introduce like rape classes or something and make them compulsory. Right. And there was an uproar which I do kind of agree with because it is a little bit patronising to people who don't need a lesson. I do kind of see where they're coming from the people who wanted to do this and maybe at school level is the place to do it and it's pretty sad that we're in that situation but some people do need to be told clearly what's appropriate and what isn't and that guy you're talking about so he here's the thing i didn't really mind because i just don't really care about stuff like that what did he do to you well he would just he put it the same sort of things that you were just talking about so he'd be like he just messaged me on facebook and be like i remember i was in a hotel in nottingham and he was like oh have you had a wank that is fucking... Um, I'm so sorry for swearing. That is absolutely and like he, disgusting. And he, this is your boss. Not exactly, no. But um, like he's a manager. He was some somebody who I was getting some freelance work okay, off. Okay, so your boss. So... Uh, 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 boss. After a fashion. 
And um, yeah, like I, I should, I should say that I didn't really mind. So, but because I, I just intensely relaxed about that kind of stuff. But I was aware that he, when talking to people, he was doing it to lots of people, and they were all around the age of university graduates who've done some like student radio and are looking for a, a job it's all those kind of you know that kind of age those people and I got wind that he was doing it to everyone and that's when I started to get annoyed because I'm like you can do it to me because I don't re- whatever do what you want but when it's when it's a whole system that you've got on the go I just want to clarify this is just messages and comments this isn't actual well then he like at an, at an event he like grabbed my dick which I didn't necessarily appreciate it but again like at the time I was like I wasn't really bothered because I wasn't don't really care it's more like are you doing that to all these other guys no Dan no, no I know I know no, but I I have to say I'm gonna say that I don't really mind because no, that's the truth I'm not no, just I'm yeah, not gonna I do I absolutely mind on your behalf I'm disgusted I'm appalled I what? feel terrible for you I'm very angry about it yeah and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm angry about it but I'm, no, angry, I'm angry about you just like let me speak for a second because <laughs> you're doing what everybody does no, I know when they go oh I don't mind it's fine it's actually not fine no I know like, I know it's absolutely but not I'm gonna fine. say that I that it, it's the truth is that I didn't really mind that right. much, and so that's, that's the m- truth for so many. Yeah, yeah, so many. But it's still, I agree with you. It's still inappropriate. But my, my main issue is that he's doing it to other people who are uh, probably not as confident, and that's that's the real issue. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It's also the real issue as well is that so many people in your position, and also people in my position, listening to this podcast or whatever, uh, have had that happen and have gone, "Oh, it's fine. It's nothing. It's actually not nothing. It's inappropriate." No, it's- I. I'm incredibly not, bad. I'm, it affects so many people in different ways and can cause, can lead to all sorts of um, mental health yeah, issues course. down the line. It's completely wrong. And what's so awful is that we just sit there and go, oh, you know, it's No, fine. I know, but oh, I, he's just I, I agree. Them, I agree. I agree. I agree. I, I couldn't agree more, but I'm still going to, I'm still telling it as I saw it at yeah, the time. Yeah, no, and it's like me just then saying, I won't say who this was like, and because I, we're friends I didn't now. have a beef with this guy. Like, I'd, gone out, I'd go out for beers with him. Do you know what I mean? It was fine. It wasn't, an, it wasn't yeah. a thing. It's only in, in a bigger context. But isn't it wrong? Don't you think, in a way, you're in the wrong for not speaking up? Because if you had, maybe it wouldn't be continuing. And same for me. Like, maybe I, at no, 18, I, whenever that was, when that happened to me. There's no way, by the way, that I could come, I could have reported it or whatever. No way in hell could I have done that at that, at that time. Of course. Because that was yeah. my only way of getting work was in this, yeah, in this yeah, company. Yeah. That's um, the thing. One man against another guy who's established. There's no way you can speak about yeah. it. Like, same. Yeah. It's disgusting. Which isn't is it? why I'm just so annoyed when people say to women or anyone else, oh, why, why don't you do anything about it at the time? Because you can't fucking do anything about the time. It's, it's really, really difficult sometimes. Yeah. It's only now. Now, in the wake of this awful Weinstein stuff, that pe- that it's possible for people to sort of come out and say, yeah. this happened to me. I'm sitting on a few things that have also happened. I'm like, well, do I say that? Do I say this? Because there was a, a sexual predator where I used to work and there was a big thing that happened. And oh my God. The, 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 the boss of the company said, does anybody know anything about this? Right. And I did know something about it. And nobody, nobody in the company said anything. Right, and it was sitting on my conscience for so much. I was like, I'm not going to be in a situation where anybody, whether it's a judge or God or anyone, says to me, "What did you do about it?" That's so not going to about it. So I went and I just did it on the spur of the moment, and I said, "This is what's going on. This is what's been happening." Yeah. If nobody's telling you this, then they're all lying. Yeah. But this is what's been going on. Everybody knows yeah. what's going on and yeah. who this person is. They all know about it, and yet yeah, they must have known too, and have just decided that they didn't want to do anything about it. I wouldn't want to speculate, but. I just feel like the world is broken, to be honest. I feel like it's the system is so wrong. There's just so many things. There's so many issues with the way the world works in terms of this and owning up and stuff and people in power and no one wanting to affect, no one wants to rock the boat or be yeah. honest about stuff because they're worried about their own being. Like, we're, we're basically selfish beings and we all only worry about ourselves and we don't want to, like, you know, it's that caveman thing. You know, you want the biggest steak for dinner, right? Yeah. You want to protect your job and your bubble. So if if that means that you're putting yourself in a position where talking about someone else could rock that, you aren't going to. Unless you're so woke that you you just cannot bear yeah, it. Yeah, it, it's more, yeah. Like you, there's where been you a, went, I'm going to speak to you about this. There's definitely been adverse consequences for, for me doing that, without a doubt. Right. And it, in, on other occasions, I've, I've weighed up 
whether to say something about some stuff because I've thought this what's going to happen here is I won't get believed. I'll be seen to be a troublemaker yeah, and, then and you I won't, won't work elsewhere. Yeah, because it's, know... yeah, it's not just the company you work for. It's, no, it's other the whole... people and how they look at you. Exactly. And yeah. it's it's the whole... It's if right. I know for a fact that's what's going to happen, then I'm, then why why would I Yeah. Why would I do that? Why would you put yourself at risk? It's exactly. And that's not selfish. That's just the way we're wired. But it's really wrong. And I'm so happy, like I said, seeing all this Me Too stuff. I, I also had another situation where I worked somewhere and I was told I was too camp. And very, very soon after that, I didn't work there anymore. They they removed me. Yeah. And I was like, should I speak about this? Should I go to gay press and say that this big company has told me that? Should I do that? And I decided no, because actually I, I'm moving on and I'm going to be working elsewhere and I don't want to be seen as a troublemaker. Yeah. I don't want to sue them. I'll look bitter. Everyone will tar me and be like, oh, he's just being bitter. Yeah. And actually that massively affected me. Yeah. And that's probably what that led to me being in depression and having therapy because yeah. that set, that was such a trigger for me and I probably should have said something. I definitely yeah. should. I'm saying it now but I'm not outing them and I don't think I want to for the same reasons as previously. Yeah. <sighs> it's so sh- it's so fucked up. So, like we should be te- we should literally all be just speaking about shit when it happens like owning it. If you go to a restaurant and Nando serve you a chicken that's like pink and not cooked properly, you'll sure as hell tweet about it and say Nando's just did this. Yeah. But you won't go, "Oh, my boss just inappropriately touched me at XYZ company." Yeah. Because you think, oh, I, I might get in trouble. Well, fine, get in trouble. I saw a tweet that on this topic. A man had emailed this woman saying, like, oh, I love cheating on my wife. Um, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. What? And she just posted the tweet with the dude's email signature and his phone number and his website and added his company in it, which he was like the, the owner of. Wow. A gay and a non-gay. Two unlikely friends take on the world. Thanks for listening. Uh, don't forget, we are doing an event. David Bowie made me gay. Uh, Waterstones. Wait, did you say it right or wrong? No, I yeah, said Bowie, it right. Bowie like Zoe, okay. I've, at no point have I called him David Bowie They're very, they sound the same. Life. They sound the same to me. Um, Bowie, not Bowie. Shut up. Waterstones, Tottenham Court Road, November the 9th. <laughs> which is a history I've been reading it I think he's, James hasn't been reading James shut going, up don't say that <laughs> James hasn't read it don't, so. don't out me I'm gonna read it um, I'm just a bit last minute with things it's it's probably a full day's work to read by the way so oh, no. I would get on that um <laughs> It's 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 a really really interesting history of LGBT music. Oh, the Scissor Sisters. I it? haven't got that far. I imagine so. It's kind of chronological. Is RuPaul in there? Um. No, I'm not sure. Is she a musician? <laughs> I'm really enjoying Dan calling RuPaul a she because technically Sorry. she is a she, but I'm I think also he identifies as a he. Okay. I well. But it was great. It was a beautiful moment that you tried. Okay. There. I apologise if I got the wrong thing. Is is RuPaul a musician? Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, yeah. Okay. Bowie! Please stop with the Bowie thing because it's just not funny. It was funny for like, we, put, we did a whole episode about it. I'm trying can to you get stop, you to say Can wrong, you stop actually? like referencing it in every other episode? Anyway, that's happening. You know how all those other podcasts last for like four hours? Yeah. And you don't get to the end. That's what we're recreating right now. The... Much like Dan, <laughs> you can't say that. Beep, uh, okay. We'll beat that out. <laughs> So a gay and a non-gay present David Berry. Oh God! Now I can't Wait. do it. Don't start, there, please. So don't start. This. Have you Let said me it right do it. What did you say? <laughs> a gay and a non-gay present David Berry made me gay. Q and A with Daryl Bullock, Waterstones, Tottenham Court Road, Thursday, November the 9th. Right. Stop. Stop it. What? Stop. Stop. We all like sighing and moaning and like just general look of annoyance. No, there's I'm, no. I'm not. All I'm trying to do is the admin of the bloody no, but podcast. It's just like you have such a weird way of doing it. No, which is what? You sound so awkward about it. No, I don't. You do. You like freeze and then pause and like continue. Like you're trying to think and you're struggling. Oh, and it's yes. Like, I tell you, that's because like James. You've got no idea how to do it. No, it's because I'm a radio professional. So I'm aware I'm leaving a gap. So that I know where to cut it from. That and it's not true. Yes, it, yes, it <laughs> is true. true. If Dal's listening, he's going to be like, who are these two reprobates <laughs> that are doing Q&A with me? <laughs> <laughs> no one is going to buy a ticket to this now. <laughs> Find us on your socials at Gay Non Gay. Listen at GayNonGay.com or just search Non Gay at your fave pod app.